During the PS2 generation, Medal of Honor made its mark with Frontline. This allowed the developer to deliver improved gameplay and graphics from the established PS1 games, and provide something on another level for players. At the same time, the PC saw their release with Medal of Honor Allied Assault, where the majority of the game also took place in the European theater. Following the release of Frontline, the developers worked to brainstorm on their next sequel. They wanted to focus on the Pacific theater since this is an overlooked portion of World War II. They also felt that this shift in location would help to breathe new life into the franchise. Join me as we take a look back at Medal of Honor Rising Sun. Following the release and the success of Frontline, the developers got to work on Medal of Honor Rising Sun. The origins for this project was to create two games that told one complete story. This would feature two U.S. brothers who fought through the Pacific Theater. At one point in the narrative, they are separated, and would allow the developers to tell two unique stories from the setting. Medal of Honor Rising Sun would be the first entry in this two-part story. The team wanted to set their story in the Pacific, since this area in the war is often over overlooked. Since up to this point, Medal of Honor had not covered this area, they felt they could provide the players with something new by using this setting. To ensure authenticity to the locations, the developers visited Pearl Harbor along with Singapore and Thailand and other locations to accurately capture the environments they wanted in their game. While at these locations, the team would capture the natural sounds. This meant that the team could deliver a wealth of different levels from the different jungles to a temple and even a luxury hotel. In some cases, cases, they would expand what the actual location was for the game. There is a bridge sequence within the game where the player derails a train and needs to fight through it. The bridge is much longer and wider than it is in real life. The developers even found themselves correcting areas that they had initially designed when they saw the actual locations. For example, the Pistol Pete level had mortar locations that the player needed to blow up, but their initial design did not have vegetation on them. But when they saw the actual area, they found out that there was a large amount of of vegetation, and as such corrected their level to ensure accuracy. This showed how the developers had a commitment to respecting these events, and making the appropriate changes where needed to ensure a better experience. The team wanted to have an explosive opening, just like in Frontline with D-Day, but here it would be the attack on Pearl Harbor. The developers wanted to show how surprising and terrifying this attack was, along with showing a soldier trying to work his way to the upper decks as the ship is being destroyed. They fired several Several of the weapons that they were going to use in the game and captured those sounds along with how they would sound hitting different targets. Rising Sun was going to tackle the gameplay sections a bit differently. The levels were going to be much larger in scope compared to Frontline. This would allow for the developers to provide alternative paths and options for the player. Also, there would be the addition of a two-player co-op mode for the campaign, a first for the series. Another addition would be the use of online multiplayer. This would be the first time this feature would appear on a console Medal of Honor game. Rising Sun was trying to provide a new and fresh Medal of Honor experience by setting it in the Pacific Theater along with providing new modes that console players had not seen in the franchise yet. In November 2003, Medal of Honor Rising Sun was released to the world. Rising Sun is a first-person shooter set in the Pacific Theater. The change in setting also means new enemies who will fight with different tactics than prior Medal of Honor games. Enemies will try and ambush you along with hiding in hills and in trees. Some will even charge at you with blades. The combat is really good and on par with the previous entries. The story takes a different approach in its presentation, and while I miss the simple briefings from the prior games, here there is an effort to tell a more personal story. Rising Sun starts off 
pretty good, but then its third and fourth mission range from good to decent, with the following five missions being mostly excellent. So this entry does stumble in some areas, but it still manages to deliver a compelling experience. The game controls very similar to Frontline. You can jump along with being able to crouch for cover. Returning is the ability to zoom, and having that acts as a means to lean either left or right and over objects. This means that you can use many of the items in the environment as a means for cover. The destructible elements from Frontline returns as well. When it comes to the weapons, it's a mix of returning favorites, along with weapons that the enemy use specifically in this area of the war. You get all the expected machine guns, rifles, and explosives explosives. Weapons feel and sound great. The quality animations and death animations from your enemies return as well, adding more satisfaction to the combat. One thing that helps to make this entry stand out at the time was how the enemy behavior is vastly different than the prior entries. You will experience many instances where enemies will try and ambush the player along with camouflaging themselves in the environment as they try to pick you off. The rushing melee attackers is something completely different and something we never experienced in the prior Medal of Honor games. This requires the player to be more observant along with playing a bit differently than say in Frontline. This type of stuff really makes Rising Sun have its own identity from the prior Medal of Honor games, along with providing authenticity to the location itself as soldiers did have to face enemies like this who use those tactics. One nice addition is how you can save mid-mission now, so at the very least you will not need to restart the entire mission if you die. Rising Sun also features much larger and longer levels than Frontline. Where Frontline was broken up into chunks, Rising Sun presents everything all together in their locations. Areas are much bigger, allowing for some exploration and even some diverting paths. This all feeds into the side missions that are stumbled upon while completing the main objectives. In many instances, you will not know what these things are at first. Completing these will unlock some rewards for the player. While I mostly did enjoy this different design, there are a few levels where it feels like they go on for just a bit too long. Rising Sun is a solid shooter that is a lot of fun. Rising Sun starts off pretty strong by letting the player participate in the defense of Pearl Harbor. The first level is mostly about showing you the controls and some nice spectacle while you are on a ship that is being attacked. The next level has you in a boat and this is a fun rail shooting stage where you are fighting a lot of planes. They break apart and explode and really add to the intensity. Both of these levels are pretty good as there's a nice build up to the action in the first mission and the second mission is where you really get into it. The entire sequence is very restrictive compared compared to the D-Day landing. Part of this is that since the enemies only attack from the air, it sort of limits how the developers could present this action. Even knowing that, I think these levels could have been a bit more involved and not as restrictive as they were. There are some good moments where the presentation really hits home how devastating this attack was. That is really what deserves all the praise in this section. The presentation is great. In Mission 3, the game returns to the more expected Medal of Honor gameplay. In this level, you are tasked with protecting a tank along with rooting out the enemy from a village, and all of this is bookended by some nice rail shooting at the end. This is a solid mission, with my only complaint being that it does go on for a bit too long. And there are parts where it can be a bit confusing on where to go next. I think part of this is how the player is getting used to the design, in this new entry where the environments are much bigger than in Frontline. So do not get surprised if you find yourself getting a bit lost in this level. The fourth mission is where I felt like it could have been cut down into two missions, to improve the pacing or possibly even just shortened. It does have some really great moments where you start off in a boat and then being dropped off to help surprise attack a group of enemies and then pursue the rest of the opposition. This level is also set at night in a forest so it can be really hard to see your targets. 
This is where you get introduced to the ambush sections of the game. My biggest issue with this level is how it goes on for far too long, and it feels like parts drag. If this mission was split into two sections or improved, that might have helped the pacing. It honestly isn't a bad level by any means, just one that you will feel the pacing take a huge hit. Thankfully following this, the game is an absolute blast for the rest of the game. Mission 5 is really exciting as you try to take out artillery installations. This is a great level with classic Medal of Honor weapons. Up to this point, I was really enjoying the game, but I'm also missing the covert operations aspect about it. The prior Medal of Honor games did a great job of always intermingling the Spec Ops nature of your mission with the bigger battles. Thankfully, Mission 6 delivers just that. In this mission, this is where you start working with the OSS, with this level easily being one of the best in the game. You are on a covert operation to sneak into the Axis meeting. This involves a lot of fighting within the city with a bunch of buildings to fight through and POWs to rescue. This is a great example example of how the bigger level design is well used in this city. The finale at the hotel is absolutely awesome. Your disguise gets detected and you need to fight your way out of it. This is a classic Medal of Honor type mission and I loved it. Mission 7 is on the shorter side but the location is exciting as you fight through a temple. Mission 8 is about the same length with a great set piece where you fight across a bridge through a destroyed train. The final mission is excellent as well as you infiltrate a carrier with a nice bit of rail shooting to close out the level. Rising Rising Sun's campaign is an example of having a slow start, but then really sticking the landing. The first two missions are short and restrictive when it comes to the gameplay, and while Mission 3 and 4 have their positives, they are not the best that this game has to offer. Thankfully from Mission 5 till the end of the game is some of the best that you will find in a Medal of Honor game. For the most part, I really enjoyed the more open design to the levels, and it fed into the secondary objectives, which required some exploration. And the set piece events were all memorable, especially the part where you you get to ride an elephant. The story is presented differently in Rising Sun. The game still uses some old war footage while using more in-engine cutscenes for a more personal story. The campaign has many side characters that will be with you throughout many of the missions, allowing you to see a familiar face in these areas. Do not expect a great level of character development here, but I do like the effort that was made to change up the story. One unique aspect is how you have a brother and you believe him dead after the third mission. The final mission has some revelations on this along with some character deaths. And while some of these areas could have been done better, I do like the attempt at trying to tell the story differently in this series. One awesome addition to this game is how the multiplayer now has bots that you can fight against. This means that the multiplayer mode is forever preserved and it's still a lot of fun. The multiplayer is pretty simple with a team deathmatch and free-for-all modes. There's plenty of maps along with some customization. Another nice feature is how you can play the entire campaign in two-player co-op. This is a first for the series and an awesome addition. Rising Sun is a really solid experience and improves on some of the areas from Frontline, but there are some flaws present as well. The most noticeable issue is how the enemy AI is a step down compared to the prior entries. There will be many instances of enemies outright ignoring you or just standing there. In a series that started and had great AI, this is really disappointing. I also felt that it was a missed opportunity to not do anything interesting with the Disguise mission. The Disguise is mainly used as a story point, but nothing through the gameplay. The Disguises were really fun in the PS1 Medal of Honors as they provided variability to the levels, and it feels like it was largely largely ignored from a gameplay standpoint in this game. As I mentioned before, the game does not have the strongest first few levels, but this is made up for for the excellent five levels that follow Mission 4. I do like the effort to try and tell a more personal story, but I do not think that this game should have ended in a cliffhanger. The campaign is about two-thirds as long as Frontline, so there was room for some additional missions. In the final mission where you find out that your brother is still alive, this would have been a good opportunity to let you play as the brother for a mission or two. And and then have the brothers unite and then conclude the game. Rising Sun can feel a bit rough in certain areas of the game, but it also brings it where it counts. The gameplay is consistently great, the final five missions are excellent, and the bots in the multiplayer provides a lot of value along with the campaign being played in co-op. Rising Sun is a solid game. I also want to mention the soundtrack as this was the first time where the returning composer did not come back and a new one was brought in. The new composer does an excellent job and holds up the mantle very well. Here are a few tracks from the game.
Medal of Honor Rising Sun is an underrated entry within the series. It delivers quality shooting along with new modes for the franchise. This was the first time that the campaign was available through local co-op, along with providing the fun addition of bots in the multiplayer. There are aspects about the campaign that are rough, but it really sticks the landing with those final five missions. This game was intended to be a two-parter, but sadly, Rising Sun did not meet the sales expectations and the sequel was cancelled. I think this game gets overlooked since in some ways it does not measure up to the extreme high quality of Frontline, but that also doesn't mean that Rising Sun isn't awesome as well. Rising Sun may have its fair share of flaws, but it delivers a memorable and quality experience. Whether it is the enjoyable campaign or the multiplayer, Rising Sun is most definitely worth playing. Thank you very much for watching.